But it definitely uh, smells like you've just walked through a cow pasture. Yes, yep. Okay, now I will say this honey does not taste like it smells. So don't worry, you're not about to taste cow pasture, but uh, it does give you a lot of those earthy vibes still. So go ahead and taste that one. Yeah, this is a setup. Hello everyone. Welcome to another edition of Red Chair Chats. This is a time when we sit down with NC State alumni and friends of the university to talk about everything Wolfpack. And we've got a great guest today in Lee Catherine Bonner. Uh, Lee Catherine is a 2015 mm -hmm. alumna of NC State uh, and is the CEO of a company called Be Downtown. Uh, she is a fourth generation beekeeper, a third generation wolf packer, kind of a big deal. Forbes magazine named her one of the top 30 under 30 uh, people in the country as CEO of Bee Downtown, which is a, a real tremendous social entrepreneurship effort. So. Lee Catherine, it's so good to be with you. Oh, I'm excited to have you here today. When we knew the chancellor was coming, we we tried to make it as fancy as we could in here. Oh, it's big. <laughs> yeah. it, it is very fancy. So not everyone knows about Be Downtown. Uh, we've got hives on Centennial Campus, and yeah. we're very proud of that. But tell our listeners today what Be Downtown is all yeah. about. What we do at Be Downtown is we install and maintain beehives on corporate campuses yeah. to help rebuild sustainable agriculture while simultaneously providing year-round employee engagement and leader development programming. Yeah. So in essence, our hope is to help cultivate great places to work through agricultural education. Now, as a, a fourth generation beekeeper, you came to NC State. What, what drew you to NC State? I'm thinking it wasn't agriculture, <laughs> but it what? turned out to be in the end. Yes, yeah. you know, at my in my family, you go to NC State, and yeah. uh, we that was not really ever in question for me. I wanted to go to my family's alma mater, and I brought today for just for you to see. So this is my grandfather's. He swam at State uh, wow. College, not University, and I'll still wear this to games. It's his uh, wool Letterman sweater. Oh my gosh, this is um, gorgeous. Yeah, and it is one of my and most well cared for. Well cared for. One yeah. of my most prized possessions is uh, that sweater. And when did your grandfather graduate from uh, NC State? I'm pretty sure 1956 or 58. Okay, well you've cared for that sweater. I don't yes. see a lot of <laughs> evidence of malls. No, uh, my, my sister, she did go to Carolina, um, but she well, we can't keep them all. We Except, try. Well, we got her back. She she now <laughs> likes to say she's got the highest degree um, from anyone of NC State in our family. She has her master's um, or MBA. So she okay. now likes to say she's the highest ranking wolf packer in our family. <laughs> well, talk about what inspired you to create Be Downtown and how NC State played a role in the early development of the yes. company. I NC State is why Be Downtown is here today. I was in first year college at NC State. I, I studied international studies, ended up studying international studies, but my, uh, my first year college class was Introduction to Bees and Beekeeping. Okay. My uncle took that class with Dr. John Ambrose, yeah. a generation before me, and Dr. John Ambrose was my grandfather's friend. And so uh, NC State being a school where science classes are not easy to get good grades in, I was like, this is bees. Like I can get a good grade in bees, I know yeah. I can. Uh, and the way Dr. Ambrose taught about a very serious issue in agriculture and around environmental sustainability uh, is that, you know, you just have to do a little bit. And if all of us collectively care a little bit more about the environment, care a little bit more about a honeybee, then we will be able to change the world. And I, I just deeply appreciated the way he taught in that yeah. way. Um, and it stuck with me. And I, you know, ended up going through and majoring in international studies. And, um, but the, the idea of I could do something with bees never left my mind. So I studied abroad. It's what you do with international studies. And while I was studying abroad, I came up with the idea for Bee Downtown and um, read a news article about uh, beekeeping in New York and how it's taking off. And urban beekeeping is very good for honeybees. There's less chemicals, there's less stress, they're not moving, um, they have diversity of food. So I thought maybe we should bring that into our agricultural states. And um, NC State bought in from the 
get go. I mean, you know, when I got, I uh, participated in the E Games, I won the E Games, and I was going to take the full time job that I'd been offered um, in Durham at American Tobacco Campus. And Donnie Goins, one of the judges, an NC State alum, he right. said, "Where's your mom? Is she here? Where's your dad? Is he here?" And so my mom's here. Um, he said, are you going to do this when you graduate? And I said, I, I don't think so. Um, he said, yeah, yes, you are. And he said, let me go talk to your mom. And he convinced my parents. He said, let her give you the pitch she just gave me and help fund her for one year. Um, they did. The rule was pay myself a livable wage, show growth, and be profitable. Donnie was the only person that ever really invested in Be Downtown up until a certain point. Um, he believed in it and all of NC State believed in it. I was late to classes. I had to leave classes early because bees were, were flying around, Burt's bees where they shouldn't be at our first partner and I'm running out the door and professors are shouting after me, just get your work done, but go get them. And you know, the, <laughs> the, the support that NC State gives to their students, what I tell people is if, if I had tried to start Be Downtown at any other university in the country, it would have never worked. Um, well, you were a trailblazer and NC State is now, as you know, one of the top entrepreneurship universities in yes. the country. And social entrepreneurship is a big part of our curriculum. But you were early in, in that process mm -hmm. of really the reinvention of, of yes. NC State for entrepreneurs. So yeah. thank you for blazing that trail. It's been an honor. Think and do the extraordinary is yes. what NC State does best. So. What's the deal with these bees? I mean, why do, <laughs> why do they run off? Mm -hmm. uh, we have two hives at the point, at the mm -hmm. Chancellor's residence, and a couple of years ago they, they swarmed mm -hmm. and wound up on uh, outside of the hive. And yes. Then this magical person came and picked out this one special <laughs> bee, yes. and the next thing I know they all headed back to the hive. Yes. So what's that about? That's called swarming, and this is the spring is the time of year for swarming. A, a honeybee colony is meant to reproduce. Um, yeah. That's what they do best. And when a colony gets too big, they will decide as a unit to split into two, and they will fly off about half of them with the original queen bee. The rest of the bees will remain in the colony, um, in the hive, and they will create a new queen. And uh, that is create a new queen. Mm -hmm. They will. Is that just rear. like they anoint? This? They will make multiple at once. Um, they want good succession planning. So we teach a lot about business analogies that you can pull from the beehive around building right. high-performing teams and effective leadership. And they they make multiple queens because if something goes wrong with one, they want there to be another one that could step in. And right. for us in our business world, you know, train people, lots of people up to be able to take the next position. Right. Um, so they will swarm. Will come collect them or a beekeeper will come collect them and then we like to say you get freebies out of it as well <laughs> all the puns well, that beat on down well a bee pun <laughs> who knew today that you were getting and genetics i mean the bee the reproduction of bees it's one of the most i'm not going to go into it although i could lecture on it for a while yes. uh the 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 genetics of bees are really yes. fascinating it is and it's it's one of the things we also teach about is you know, diversity matters. Yeah. If there's no diversity in a beehive, if the genetics are all similar, it will crash. Um, but if you are working to have diversity of genes in your hives, our beekeepers will create queen, the rear queens with good yeah. genetics. Um, SAS, their campus always has really good genetics of bees. So we'll create well, queens of course off they of that. Do. Yeah, exactly. I mean, <laughs> statistical analysis yes, of genetics. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, But if you don't have good genetics, it will crash. And in our human world too, diversity yeah. is, is so important. We need to have it in lots of different areas. And it's the same for the beehive as well. Why is um, maintaining a culture of bee production so important for agriculture? Yeah, so what what I like to say is, you know, I, I grew up, our family farm was about an hour away, and I got to, f I had the privilege of being around agriculture and seeing what it takes to, to turn something from seed to harvest and uh, what it means to, to love and adore the earth. And then I, but I had, I grew up in Raleigh, um, and I got all the amenities and opportunities that a city has to offer. But the, the bees are, you know, every third bite of food we eat is thanks to a pollinator. 70 of the world's top 100 food crops come from bees. Um, but we, we don't know agriculture anymore in cities. Too many people are too many generations removed from the farming family that they had where there's been a loss of respect for agriculture. So our bees on, you know, 
Cox Enterprise, Delta, MetLife, Cisco, Microsoft, New York Stock Exchange on their campuses, they're not there to pollinate necessarily the foods that we're eating. They're there to bring a little bit of agriculture back into cities, a little bit of the magic back um, for people to learn and have a renewed sense of respect for the the hard work, you know, everybody always jokes about NC State's the ag school and it's not a joke. And, <laughs> and I'm like, it's a yeah, th yeah, it's a privilege that yeah. we have a school where we see cows and our milk comes from our cows and we get to learn about agriculture because it's we need to learn how to love our earth and farmers know how to love the earth. Um, we're the most destructive species ever on the planet, humans. And we've forgotten what it means to deeply adore our, our earth yeah. and the word cultivate which is an agricultural word, means a deep sense of adoration. And so it is uh, my favorite thing to be able to tell people I graduated from the ag school. I didn't graduate with an ag degree, but I graduated from the cow school, and I'm very proud of it. <laughs> I think uh, you've earned, uh, as evidence yeah. from all these uh, B boxes, yes. an agriculture yes. degree. <laughs> so, all right, I've been dying to know, you know, not everyone has a hyphenated first name. Yes. It's, it, it, and it, growing up, you've got to tell us, where did Lee Catherine come from? Yes. And when you were young, you know, you had probably had the largest name in your in your kindergarten yes. class. <laughs> so you had to come up with something that your classmates yes. called you. I, so tell me about Lee Catherine. Yes. Is, are those um, family names? Or? They are. So very, very Southern. You know, you name people after everybody so that nobody's upset. Uh, my parents named me after the two of the strongest women in their life. So my oh. great grandmother, Ida Lee, who had the green thumb, the farmer, uh, all very nature oriented. And then Catherine, my father's um, grand grandmother, she was the entrepreneur and okay. she was uh, she ran a bar for shift workers in Philadelphia and worked sun go. up till sundown. So we joke that I, I did get it. I got the entrepreneur piece from my dad's family and the, the deep hard working piece from both. But then I got the um, the farming piece from my mom's family. Yeah, so that's a great story. It's a long name. I came home from school the day we learned how to write names at school and I came home crying and I told my mom, I'm never going to learn how to write my name. So There's too many letters. <laughs> Um, so I get, my whole family calls me Lily. Um, my extended family calls me Lily, And then Lee Cat, LKB, LK, I kind of answer to anything. <laughs> well, I noticed your LK out on the, yep. the wellness chart, yes, the yes. wellness bingo <laughs> game here at B Downtown. Tell us a fun fact about bees. Uh, what's, Ooh. what does our listeners, what, what can you tell them about bees that yeah. they don't know and they would find bizarre? Ooh, well, You've already talked about swarming. Yes, I so think. You can't use that yeah, I can't use swarming again. Okay, we'll talk about honey because everybody loves honey. I love honey. So a pound of honey, a pound jar of honey, uh, takes about fifty-five thousand collective flight miles from the bees to produce. So wow. that's over two circumferences of the Earth flown in order to produce yeah. one pound of honey. It I mean, truly 55, is like fifty-five thousand frequent flyer miles could get that, you a free ticket. Exactly, it's a big deal. Yeah, that, and they do it all the time. They'll, they'll bring in, you know, a colony of bees can bring in seven pounds of honey in a day or nectar in a day. Um, so they're 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 very busy busy bees, and they'll they will uh, from the moment the hives went in at Centennial Campus, um, and they're at your house too. Yeah. They they start to impact eighteen thousand acres of the surrounding community. And you know, we have bees at Centennial Campus. We have them at WREL. We have them at AJ Fudger Foundation. We have them at Murphy's Naturals. So the three mile radiuses that the bees are going to fly begin to overlap. And yeah. what the companies do is they say, well, we want to make sure our entire campus is planted to where it's healthy for the bees. We don't want to hurt the bees. And when they do that, they make their campus better for all of the pollinators. And that creates the ripple effect that Dr. Ambrose taught me about of yeah. you do a little bit and collectively you do a lot. And so we have about 500 beehives this year with over 100 corporations from D.C. to uh, Tampa, Florida. And we we get to watch companies fall in love with nature again. Yeah. And they're the many of the largest corporations in the world. And, you know, when you go public on the New York Stock Exchange, uh, now you get a jar of honey of the, of the Intercontinental Exchange, the owning company of wow. the Stock Exchange, you get a jar of honey. And to just know that that happens and these corporations are so proud of what they're doing in agriculture makes, makes me happy um, because I, I love agriculture and I love the stories and the lessons. And I think that we can all learn a lot if we yeah. just stop and listen to nature. Yeah. Okay. So what do we have today? I'm pretty excited. 
So we're going to do a honey tasting. This okay. is one of the programs we run with okay. our partner corporations where they get to learn how to become basically a sommelier of honey. So we're going to start with Bandwidth's honey. This is from Centennial Campus. Okay. So I'm let you... A good pour, by the way. You know, you we, don't really skimp, are a we don't skimp here. <laughs> yeah. So this is your um, wildflower honey. So mm -hmm. you can go ahead and you can smell it. You can also give it so a taste. So I should taste Centennial Campus. Exactly. You should taste some Wolfpack in there. Wow. <laughs> so what you're going to get are some nice florals. You're also going to get a little bit of that fresh cut grass. Um, it's very light honey, but yeah. wildflower honeys are known to be very complex. So we're actually the reigning champions for the best tasting honey in the United States. Um, the Georgia, reigning champions? Yes. Georgia Powers Campus won best tasting honey in the U.S. through the largest um, honey competition in the country. Wow. And it's a wildflower honey. So they're complex. They've got a lot going on with them. Um, and they're, they're very memorable honeys. But we don't know what flowers the bees went to. But then we'll move on. Now, this on. isn't like a wine tasting. I'm, I'm not supposed to like spit this back No, out. you get to eat this. Oh, this, good, this you good. get to, yeah, yeah. I, it's gone, <laughs> and it was fantastic. It's a, it's a very good honey. Uh, and you know that we, we keep, uh, the entomology department keeps hives at the chancellor's residence. Yes. And a very similar flavored honey yes. uh, to, to what's produced on Centennial because turns out chancellor's residence is on Centennial. <laughs> yes. Same wildflowers. And great, yeah, lots of great um, florals. It's very and, good. Yes. So we're going to go to the spring. This is going to make okay. you feel like springtime. Um, and this one I really love. I'm, I'm a fan of lighter honeys. Okay. So this is orange blossom. So this is not a honey we produce. This is a honey from uh, Florida. And, and it is from the orange groves. And it's one of the orange blossom honey is one of the most frequently found yes. in, the, in supermarkets yes, and stores. Yes, absolutely. So yeah. if you give that one, you can smell it, you can taste it. You're going to get, uh, it's very bright. It will remind you of springtime. It's got a little bit of a bite, a, a sharpness that's a citrus that you'll, it, it's very light. Um, I get more honeysuckle in this. It, it takes yeah. me back to being, you know, just like eating honeysuckle as a kid. Yeah. A little bit confectionery. It's a sweeter honey than this one is. Um, but it is, it's the one you're going to find at the grocery store. And about 70% of the honey that you find at the grocery store is high fructose corn syrup um, or it's been overheated and it's no longer got healthy properties. So it's really important to know your, your farmer um, yeah. and know where your honey is coming from. It's not like the maple syrup industry that you know if it says maple syrup, it's maple syrup. Yeah. Uh, most honey, you, you have no idea wow. where it came from. Yeah. That's a problem. Yes, a big. It's a big problem. Yes, we, and we uh, need, it sounds like well, let's not ask for government intervention, <laughs> but uh, that sounds like a problem that needs to be solved. Yes, it's for hard for beekeepers too yeah. because they work so hard and they uh, they their honey is at, like sold at a lower price point than it should be, and it, it's well, you want to support your local farmers. Yeah. Um, so this next one is the one that I think you're going to probably uh, get the the most memories from. Wow. So we're gonna head into, this is actually a spring honey. This is tulip poplar honey. So this is grown okay. on the East Coast, tulip poplar tree. This is one of my favorite trees because people don't realize that it flowers because the flowers are up high. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know all of this, but it is a beautiful tree that we have on the East Coast. So this one, definitely give it a smell. Um, I'm actually gonna have you trade, change okay. out your spoon because this is the- See, you've got to really do this right. <laughs> You're welcome to just throw it on the, the hive. Okay. Um, so this one, definitely smell it first. And a monofloral honey means the beekeeper hunted for the honey. You have to be a skilled beekeeper to get monofloral honeys. It's 51% of the same floral source. Okay. Um, bees have floral fidelity, so they're going to go to the biggest blooming option first. So give that one a smell and tell me what you wow. smell. <laughs> you can use your wheel if you want to use your wheel. Well, this is more earthy. I mean, uh, I, I've got a wheel. I need to come up with some. <laughs> What should I be smelling? I Earthy is right yeah, on track. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, my choices in earthy are mushroom, rain, farm, and dirt. It's definitely uh, soil-like. He, you're trying. He's trying to be polite here and say it doesn't smell like a farm animal. And, well, like, it dirty smells a little animal. bit. Of, no, <laughs> that's not. That's the smell of money. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> there you go. Oh, Agriculture right yeah. there. But it definitely uh, smells like. You've just walked through a cow pasture. Yes. Yep. Okay. Now, I will say this honey does not taste 
like it smells. So don't worry, you're not about to taste cow pasture, but uh, it does give you a lot of those earthy vibes still. So go ahead and taste that one. Yeah, this is a setup. <laughs> okay. Wow. That's very different. Right? Than the smell. Yes. Um, I can't. Uh, it's it's lovely, actually. It's I was I was ready for it to be, you know, a cow patty. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a uh, <laughs> dried dried fruits. You get some yeah. dried raisin. Uh, it's got a nuttiness to it too. If you put this tulip poplar honey on a uh, truffle Gruyere cheese, it is well. That's outstanding. That Good Catherine, parent. that's a little high flute. <laughs> a it truffle. Is, yeah. It's pretty good though. It's pretty good. I uh, and this one goes on a brie, so you yeah. can put your orange blossom on a on a brie cheese. Okay. Yep. But that, uh, yeah, the nuttiness, the earthy tones of it are pair very well with um, like a, a nutty cheddar cheese. Yeah. Well, so how would I mean poplar tree tulip poplar? Not poplar in the mm -hmm. a tulip poplar is a very um, you know, distinctive deciduous tree, but it's not, it's not frequently the most, um, the most frequent uh, species in a forest. Mm -hmm. So how, how does a, a beekeeper find a sufficient supply yeah. of tulip poplar to make a honey that, they, that, that's yeah, that good? That's a great question. So the beekeepers move their honey. beehives. Yeah. Um, and so they'll find pockets of, um, of tulip poplar trees. And sometimes even in North Carolina, you don't realize it, but you have a pocket of tulip poplar. And so we'll have honeys that are definitely have tulip poplar in them, but they mm -hmm. may not be over 51%. Uh, most spring honeys are very light, but this is the only dark spring honey. So if you get a colored honey like this in the spring, you know you've gotten some tulip poplar in there somehow. Um, but that's, you know, for uh, Tupelo honey, which is another very famous mm -hmm. honey, they actually bring all the beehives down and in South Georgia, North Florida, they, um, they float the beehives out onto rafts in the swamps because that's where the Tupelo is. So all the bees, the so beehives that's a, float. The black gum mm -hmm. tree. They'll all float out in the, the swamps and they'll bring the bees back mm -hmm. and that's how they know. So it, it takes a very skilled beekeeper to be able to create monofloral honeys and that's we, why they're more expensive typically. We have um, a number of tulip um, poplar trees in the forest around the residence, but it's not you know, the, the bee that comes from the hives on our property um, is a lighter honey, mm -hmm. so it's definitely not the dominant mm -hmm. source of pollen. Yes, but you may get some like earthy notes to the honey. Like I said, like fresh cut grass you get in this, so you may get some of those more earthy notes. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate that you know trees and understand trees. As a beekeeper, you, you have to learn your trees. So a tulip tree is a very tall species. Yes. And, and you said the centennial uh, the bandwidth honey is a wildflower. Mm -hmm. So the bees are foraging in a, a lower altitude than mm. they would for a tulip tree. Does that make a difference in yes. where they find the Okay, so the that's nectar? a great question. So wildflower means we simply just don't know. Um, so it's not yeah. necessarily like wildflowers. Oh, okay. um, but so they, it's they a may... wild guess. Yep, exactly. It's a, it's a swag guess. It's a sophisticated <laughs> wild guess. Uh, so we don't know okay. where it is, right. but, um, but they are going I'm to floral her. sources. <laughs> exactly. <No. laughs> but the, but what people don't realize is most nectar is actually coming from trees. Yeah. So when people plant flowers for pollinators, what you, you know, a really important thing to do is plant trees. And, you know, we talk about our environment and the issues we have in our environment, what's happening to honeybees. And, uh, you know, people are very quick to say certain things. But at the end of the day, it is habitat reduction. It's that we clear cut land. Our farms are now massive farms that have mm -hmm. monoculture farming and Nowhere in nature do you find a naturally occurring monoculture. So the fact that we think that that's our best way to farm now, we're, we're fighting nature at all times. Um, so it is, you know, the, I, I read a statistic one time, you'll appreciate this, that children today, and I would argue it's adults too, um, can name over a hundred corporate logos before they can name 10 trees outside their front door. Wow. That's a problem. It is, yeah. And Not I, for the corporations, but, yeah, but and, for our future. Yes, and I had a friend say, well, you know, our corporate logos are in your face all the time, yeah. but so are the trees. We just, we don't, we don't slow down enough as a society yeah. to, to understand the importance of our environment. Yeah, I, I suspect that um, 
you could recognize the NC State logo before you knew. <laughs> I was trees. drawing those before I could write my name. <laughs> well, this has been a great, uh, a great experience and wonderful honey. So thank you for sharing this yes, with Yes, absolutely. And I'm the one that got to taste it. So <laughs> phenomenal. Next thank time you. we'll put you in a beehive. Oh yeah, that'll yeah, be special. We'll get you a suit and we'll get you in the beehive. <laughs> I'll take I'll bring my epi pen just Perfect. in case. Just in case. Okay. Safety first. Well, thank you so much for sharing the story of Be Downtown with our audience yes. today. And for everything you do to continue to promote agriculture and uh, beekeeping and all the benefits that come from that for our world. So thank it's you. great. Another great example of a wolf packer that has taken uh, something that you knew well growing up. Uh, and turned it into a passion going forward. So thank you. Thank you. It is an honor to be an alumni from NC State. Go Pack. Go Pack. <laughs>